Welcome, fish lovers, to Creature Aquarium Guy. Uh, it's been such a long time since I've do done anything, um, uploading videos and stuff. I'm not gonna go into my personal life and stuff, but things have happened, and I just wanted to show you how they look, my aquariums, when I'm only doing water changes. Because I haven't cleaning filters, I haven't doing the glasses, I haven't cleaning anything, just doing water changes and I usually do them every five to seven days because I really like crystal clean water and trimming plants and all that stuff. I have done nothing of that. I've been like, oh, it's 14 days on this aquarium, it's 16 days on this, it's 20 on this since water change. And so I just want to show you an honest, old school, uncut tour of how my aquariums look. And I think we just get into it and I can talk about everything while I'm filming them. So yeah, I, my only regret is I've been feeding the Harry Puffer for three days in a row because he's finally eating dead stuff. So I've been feeding him clams a lot. So he's probably be, gonna be hiding even though I'm bragging about he's out all the time. He's so outgoing for being a hairy puffer. Usually they are like uh, dragon puffers or arrowhead puffers or mirrors puffers that they stay still until you eat and feed them and then they stay still for a week. But mine is exploring and out all the time and he lives with fish and he doesn't eat them. So another myth busted, you can't keep fish with hairy puffers. I have a discus with mine just to show you I will risk that. Although it is a discus that I've been problem with. But and my apartment is a mess also because of my life is in shivers. So don't judge me on that. I'm just gonna show you the tanks. I'm not gonna edit the video, anything, I'm just gonna walk around and the tanks is the only thing it's gonna be uh, the lights are only gonna be on the tanks because my apartment looks terrible. Okay? So we can start with, uh, in the kitchen and then just work every room from there. I'm gonna flip around the camera now, okay? <clears throat> so this is the Harry Puffer tank. He lives with six times algae eaters. You can see a bunch of algae on the glass, blah, blah, blah. But the plants are pretty healthy. A little bit of an algae problem, but when, once this uh, five crypt lutea starts really growing because they are fairly new, um, they're gonna fill out all this space. And I finally got a pink flamingo, but as you can see, it couldn't handle winter shipping in Sweden. And uh, you can't blame it for that, right? And this guy has been eating nothing for three and a half months. I'm just waiting every day to find him dead. And then I put him in with the Harry Puffer and he starts eating clams because it's so, not so much other fish that um, uh, fights about the food. Because the Harry Puffer comes out, eat like eight clams and then he's full, his gut is loaded. And then I take two extra more and just crumb them down and he eats that. And before all that I feed these guys with pellets or like this stuff. And this is just clean up crew but he's been lazy. As you can see the glass is not very good. But I've been doing more on an open scape because I love this wood and I took it out and I did a whole video about it but I didn't release that. I had like materials for hours ever since June for like 10 videos. But I was like, now it's a new year and it's been like eight months ago from the first video. And start adding in all that together when they're not even looking like that and I've changed them. I'm just gonna start from here instead. That's, what I wanna, that's why I'm going to do this video. So you have like, this is how they look now and the next video, whatever it's gonna be, you are updated. 
And of course, like I said, my regret is feeding him a lot two days in a row because then he's hiding because he's digesting. But I know where he's hiding. He's hiding here. But usually he just sits here, here, on top of log here, up here, close to the light. He's not shy at all. So I love it. I really get to see him every day. And they can be fed once a week. And if I do that, he's swimming around, active. So my initial plan was that, to make a really dense scape. In the beginning I had like plants covering the whole surface. So it was pretty dark. So he felt, felt like I have 10 places to hide. In the beginning he also could fit in that cave, he can't anymore. So I should probably take it out because I don't have any pleco in here. Uh, yeah. And I'm still hoping to... Uh, I've been treating this with Hexamita and Asia 2000, all kinds of things, a lot of times. And finally, two weeks ago, we started eating, but it's not a lot. And it's super thin. It's almost like a baseball card. So I don't know. But I, of course, I will keep if he's alive and breathing and eating a little. It's still hope for him. Right? And he's not eating, he wasn't eating anything else. And suddenly he starts eating clams on a can. And I'm talking about everything else. Frozen food, blood worms, black worms. Yeah, and so on. So there's this, this tank. So this is not me showing off my tanks and being proud of them. This is just being honest when you don't do anything about them. Look at this Bulbitis, for example. It looks terrible. Do you understand what I mean? I want to show you an honest video on your tank, even though you've been in the hobby like me for over 30 years, it's not going to, all your tanks is not going to look great all the time. Uh, you have periods in your life when it's like moments like I had now for the last three months that's without going into too much personal details that I do the water change just to keep the fish alive and the water quality is great because I'm staying so over top on the water quality and the filtration so I know I can have these moments if something happens. That's why I keep my tanks like that. So they won't look so good but the water quality is perfect in each one. So there is this tank. Sorry that we couldn't see Mr. Harry better than this. And it's my fault, but it's super social and outgoing, so I love it. I love it so much, so if I had more money, but I don't, because the electricity bill was $400 this month, so I'm at that level, just surviving. But if I had, I would really like to add like three more Harry Poppers in here, just because... Ah, I think... I'll... I like to be the Mythbuster, you know that. But we move on now. I always talk too much. I know that. The bin is still going with the uh, goldfish. But this uh, is a rental apartment and uh, it really shows that the people in the whole country is going down on heat is included, but it's not warm in here. I'm wearing a tank top right now because I just take, took, your, uh, took a shower and did some push-ups. Otherwise, I'm, I'm in a hoodie and sometimes even a hat inside because it's cold in my apartment. So think about that with all the heaters and stuff. But the goldfish doesn't need it, but they don't grow very fast. So this is just trimmings or this one was growing insane uh, immersed on this tank so much that I couldn't see it was dark even though it's a super powerful light on it so I took out everything because it was going crazy but there are goldfish in here and they look amazing but they don't grow so fast I was buying that one for just um, that one I, the white one I got for free if you saw another video you know that but they like to hide from me you see the tank isn't that dirty and he has lost all his brown color and it's almost orange. 
completely. Do you see that? The big difference? Like I told you in the beginning, you never know with the goldfish. A black goldfish can turn out to be a yellow goldfish six months later. So don't choose them by color, choose them by quality in the body shape. Uh, yeah, not much show a uh, black comet. I bought that for duckweed control. And it didn't work because the Africans were too aggressive against, against him to even have him here for a day. So I put him in the, in the tub. And I don't know what to do with these because I don't have any tank to put them in. And I hate having this look. This doesn't look good in any apartment. Yeah. Even though my apartment is not looking good at all right now. A tub on the, with like that and splashing up. So this is gonna, I'm gonna get rid of this soon. But I wanna give them a really good home, you know. I don't wanna go into a bad store and just give them away and they sell them to anyone. I've been keeping them long enough. I don't know what it is about goldfish. They feel like puffers, more like personality pets. So I get attached to them and I feel responsible for them. Maybe I throw them in my 175 gallon. It's crazy enough to have goldfish in there as well because I keep everything else in there. If you've been watching my videos, 200 fish in a 175 gallon, pretty much from every continent in the world. But let's move on from the tub because that is just a mess, but the water quality is great. So you see, it can look like this and the water quality is great because it's crushed coral, bunch of snails, bunch of plants, and they always float up to this light. And this LED light is just a normal bulb LED uh, that only sh takes four watts. So this is not costing me so much. That's why I'm just not getting rid of it, but I'm going to. This tank looks like it has a lot of air bubbles, and it has because I need to top it off a little bit. It's getting too much air into the sump in the back. Um, but the fish are doing amazing, keeping breeding. I still have one struggler, uh, a fire mud cichlid. I have a lot of them in the 175, and he's still surviving. I haven't felt the need to take him out, but it would look better to take him out because it's not, it doesn't fit into the tank. I've been lowering, lowering the lighting hours of all my tanks because, yeah, I had that covering because I know Anubias would get algae. But it looks really a lot better in person and it's super thick and it looks like I want it to be, but the glass is completely covered with the green algae, so it looks dirty. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe if I turn on, yeah, all these ones are not particles in the water. That's the, you know, the really green algae that you need to scrape off. You can see that on the side here as well. That is because the light is super strong. But the water quality is amazing and the fish keeps breathing. We have so many of these now. And we only had two, remember? Because I bought six, but the Fahaka ate everyone except one male and one female. So they are keeping breathing, and you see, and when I feed, they come out these small ones as well. So it's a lot more in here than it looks. So I love this tank because it's so low maintenance. I talked about it before. The sump holds like the same amount of filtration as three FX6 filters, and it's a 300 liter tank, so 78 gallons or whatever, something like that. Uh, so it's so low maintenance. And I just love African cichlids. They eat everything, they're always happy. If the water, big water changes, they're even happier. So easy to keep and still beautiful. And they eat algae, so they're perfect with Anubias tree like this. Okay, let's go on to the tank that you haven't seen a lot of. My favorite corridor of all time is the Duplicarius. They are super outgoing and they are trying to breed because I have 10 of them. And these are the bigger ones are actually parents to the other ones. So I bought them like that. But they're not doing it because of course these ones will eat eggs and stuff. But you see how well they do still in fresh water? 
another myth that I'm trying to bust here. I still have all 10 of them. They look amazing. The beaks are not big. You can see all of them have closed mouths because I feed them rams or snakes. And they are a bunch of beautiful Anubias in the back. Bonsai Anubias, super expensive to buy. They have holes in the leaves, so I don't know why. Probably they need more nutrition in this tank. But I still need to keep like this hygrophila that I don't like so much because algae control. But I lowering the lights and it's looking better. But this is the same thing that it is that it was with the last tank. The complete glass of this, and this shape makes it uh, more difficult to scrape off. The magnet doesn't do it, so you need to do it by hand. So that's also been like three months. So, oh, silver tip tetras I also have in here. Just to eat the stuff that the messy eaters don't. They usually get clams on a can. Uh, of course, brine shrimp and stuff as well, and snails. But I'm trying more and more to get him onto pellets because last time I had figure eight puffers, they loved the. Uh, I have it here. Good. The sinking cichlid gold. This is like my superfood because it's super cheap and it's in my video, my last video, but it's really long time ago. But I think this is in that video because this has always served me so well. It smells a lot, so don't feed too much at the same time, but all fish love it. If I put it in now, all plecos come out, all corridors come out, and even the puffers will taste them. And it's cheap, but make sure you buy the sinking kind, because I don't know what they did the different with the normal Oscar on it, that is floating, but that is not interesting to them at all. So it's this particular version. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, I scared them off, but the white bristles with blue eyes, not albino, because they have blue eyes. I thought I only had females and went and bought a big male that was super expensive because the females were already expensive at this size. And I never buy plecos at this size because at this size they can still be like, oh, I'm just dying because I'm not a good specimen. But I had to because I had never seen this super white or snow white, like they call them, with blue eyes. But now as they mature, I think I have only males. So I have five males. And it's also a salt on pleco in here, but if you know them, they're carnivores. So it's perfect. They eat the leftovers. If I put in too much clams for the figure eight puffers or something, he's gonna eat it at night. And of course I drop some in the back there because I know he lives in that house. You can see that it is a house, but it's an artificial cave that's really big and he lives in there. So of course this would have looked better for the video if I trimmed it down and taking off this floating plan, a cleaning glass, blah blah blah. But I told you I wanted to show you an honest video. But the water quality is amazing and if you want to look at my filter video how I set this up, I still haven't cleaned it. And the water is crystal clear, but the glass is not. Now you can see the glass. This is what is on almost all my tanks. So, if you want to know how to set up... So many people say they don't want to have canister filters because it's such a pain to clean them. I'm going to show you my most stable tank. That canister filter hasn't been cleaned since the last apartment when I set it up. Look how long time that was. I think it's like two and a half years. I only clean the pre-filter sponge because it's filled with ceramic. So you don't have to clean your your uh, uh, your canister filters that much if you set them up like I do. And I, and this is a recent video. I've done it many times, but. On the Crystal Pro, you're gonna find it in the last like 20 videos, at least, how I set it up. Uh, to not have to clean them, because it's a pre-filter sponge, you can't see it because it's up behind the driftwood, but it's a pre-filter sponge there and I clean that one. That's the only thing I do. So that, squeeze that a couple of times, but good to go. 
and it's a building corner filter here and there I have just fine filter plus and I have so much so I have this thick amount so I take that out and underneath it's clean and half of it is also ceramic so my method is really working guys you should really try it people do so much more cleaning than they have to and another thing I never gravel whack if you're new to the channel old people know that because I said that old subscribers know that because I've always said that but I never gravel whack and my water is crystal clear and super good when I measure it I only change water because I like it to look as crystal clear as possible okay so this tank needs a lot I I'm gonna take away the hagrophila because it is more beautiful and um, uh, crypts and stuff and carpeting plants underneath it all but they're not growing at the rate that I want them to and if I'm gonna take away all the hygrophil that work that grows super fast it's gonna be an algae problem so I'm not there yet but when I see them taking off a little bit more I'm gonna take off a little bit I already done that this was covered like Two months ago it was covered, you couldn't look into the tank with the hagrophila. And then that goes into the bin, because goldfish eat plants if you don't feed them for a while. If you feed them a lot, you can keep plants with goldfish. That I've shown you in a lot of videos. But let's move on. My videos always get so long. My most stable tank is the tank that I've shown you before. <laughs> oh, I'm against the wall here, so I need to go... Whoa, so like that so I can show you but I don't like doing that because it's not as clear when you do so if you watched my neon tetra disease video how harsh I was when I saw the slightest slightest thing on one I fed it to the header puffer or killed it and throw it away that now it's been like five months so yeah it cost me like 20 25 percent of them but now not a single one had it habited anymore so that just shows that my method works you just have to cal calculate that into if you want 100 if you want 75 neon tetras buy 100 and be ruthless in the beginning and of course the platys are breeding and the plants are taking over a little bit because it's so much more anubias underneath this pearl weed and stuff but you see I haven't done anything to the glass only changing water in like six months in this tank and it's not a single algae on the glass on either side so this is the most balanced one and this has the one that I talked about two and a half years ago I set it up in a video for the pea puffers in the old apartment like two and a half years ago and I haven't cleaned it I haven't opened it since I only change the pre filter two small sponges in there maybe once every two months so that's it I never buy floating foods and you can see why they're so used to me feeding them in the water column so it takes a lot for them to go to really eat those but I got them for free as a test the new food and it was good ingredients so I don't want to waste anything so I'm trying to feed it off but I never buy floating foods uh, not counting flakes of course because you can pinch them and put them underneath water and they're not floating anymore so but these ones will float forever uh, but like I said I didn't prepare to do a great or uh, anything and I have algae issues but we have beautiful shrimp in here. The Bloody Marys are breeding like crazy. We have stir by Corridoras that are scared right now, of course. And this up close to the tank. We have a beautiful Cryptocorine that's growing on the side here. And we have so much more Anubias underneath this pearl weed. So I'm, I don't know if I want to take off the pearl weed, but if I take that out, it's like 20 more Anubias under there and they are so much more expensive than the pearl weed. You can grow pearl weed in like weeks. So maybe I do that. I don't know why this 
just keeps growing thicker and thicker instead of spreading to here. But in my experience in the long run, you need have need to have some clean space where you put the food in for the bottom feeders. Because I have a uh, long fin bristle nose pleco, uh, and what do you call them? Super red. And four rare wild caught plecos, but I never see them because they live in this structure of wood. I have a video when I set this tank up and then you see how much wood it is underneath all this. So they live in there and I never see them. So I only pe put in pellets at night for them. And if I walk by, I see one eating and then in. But I never see them during the day. So and the Hercules snails, I put, I mean, you see Hercules, not rabbit snails. They are a lot bigger. And I've been spreading them out because I don't have such hard water here. A little bit low on calcium. So I noticed that on the snails. So I want to spread them out and see which aquarium will take the Hercules snails best. Because, so I have... Hercules snails, they are breeding, but I'm spreading them out in all my aquariums. I love snails in aquariums, just like Corey says. I'm on the same page. I really love snails in aquariums. They eat everything that other fish miss. And it is like 20 Amana shrimps in here as well. So this is pretty heavily stocked, but it's super balanced. It's beautiful endler that I got just on a mistake. When I bought other fish, they I bought four Siamese algae and I got it and it was a fry. I was like, ah, keep it. And it's so beautiful that I had to put in a female. But then that female jumped out and all the babies <laughs> turned out to be male, so I need to get another female if I want to keep going with that. But I don't know, they get eaten by the platys. They are so much bigger and faster, so breeding endlers in the same tank as platys and this amount of neon tetras is not a good idea. It's not gonna be super successful. You're gonna keep, you're always gonna have a couple of them because there are many hiding places, but it's not a super good idea. And this is just a normal sheep beta that I just bought to support a store just before he closed down, uh, unfortunately. Like a lot of companies do now, clear bankruptcy is Economy is super bad for everyone. And really just because one guy in Russia has a big ego. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I should... Ah. I was scooping out some floating plants, so I put the filters off. So now it's gonna look super dirty because I turn them on and then they're gonna spit out all the dirt. But this is the crazy tank. I'm so regretting just putting them on. I could, it was better filming with, without doing that because I haven't filled, this filter I haven't cleaned in since I moved in. Uh, it's been like 15 months and the uh, fx 6 also needs cleaning. You saw how clear it was before I turned them on. That's a real indication that the filter needs to be cleaned. To look clear, crystal clear, it's gonna look better than this after an hour, but I mean the quality of the water is still great and that is what you're gonna look for. That is the most important thing. But I'm sorry I did this now because you can't see any fish. But it is like 150 fish in here and the weirdest combination ever. But the economy thing has done one thing. My discus are keep getting thicker and thicker and I don't feed them any beef heart, any frozen food, any expensive food anymore. They eat flakes. So watch my food video, top 10 food. Because, because I don't have any money, I had to train all fish to eat that so it's been such an experience but it's awesome unfortunately I had also have to sell a couple of discus because they are expensive and I needed money to bills to pay bills like electrical bills that's been going up like thousand percent so but I have 
three beautiful ones, two Pigeon Bloods and one, my favorite blue one left. I had to sell that white checkerboard because he was so beautiful, so I got a lot of money for him and it was worth it. So I got more than I bought it for. And that's not, that is a rare case. If you buy something in the store, just keep it for a couple of months and then get more from it and you sell it from home. And that is the evidence that you can't have a yellow parrot cichlid because they're gonna turn out orange or red. Because almost all food have something that gonna keep them getting orange. I just bought that to prove my brother wrong because he told no 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 you can't keep them yellow. I said no 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 you cannot. Any discus person knows this that has yellow discus. It's super difficult to keep them yellow. You need to have only those yellow discus and you need to really know what to feed them. And it's super hard because even brine shrimp and stuff like that is going to make them red. And spirulina is going to make them darker. Uh, so it's just... If a fish is yellow it's not the same thing. But when they take out yellow kinds of a fish that's not naturally yellow, it's not possible to keep them yellow for the whole life. At least in my experience. The kissing gouramis, I love them so much. I, to, I, I think I said it in another video, but they are super good algae eaters. They eat black beer algae, hair algae, and all that stuff. They just graze on everything. And this is the biggest change that I haven't shown you, I almost forgot. Instead of taking having two lights on here, I have a peace lily, and sorry I forget now, but this was an experiment. This is not supposed to work like this. Be with the roots in the water. But the plant colors look so amazing that I was like, I don't care, I'm gonna try. Because I love how beautiful it was. And it's thriving. Because these were like this big and super expensive. Four of these. And now it's, yeah, big leaves reaching for the light. And the peace lily is going great. Everybody knows that. That you can have that in aquarium like I mean. And this was a plant that I bought as an aquarium plant. Like a lot of stores do, at least in Sweden. But as soon as it came home, I just felt the leaf and was like, no, this is not an aquarium plant. And so I just took some wire and put it like this. And yeah, I have another thing that's gonna take away nitrates in the water. Look, I really need to clean the filters, the FX6 filters. I'm gonna leave that alone, the big uh, EIM Classic, because it's like 22 pounds of ceramic in it, so it's the base of the whole aquarium. And deep substrate. You see how deep I keep it? And people think this is a bad thing? No, because all this acts like filtration. If we go to a lake or a sea on the bottom, does any sea or bottom have sand this thick? No. So, I have videos on this aquarium where I explain all the fish in it. It's too much to, to name them all because the video is getting too long so people are gonna lose interest. Oh, I so regret putting the filters on. It was crystal clear before because everything was settled. <laughs> But this is the same thing with this aquarium. It looks more hazy because look, this is not debris, this is algae. Because I haven't cleaned the algae on the glass for like four months. So, but it's gonna balance itself out. As soon as this grass spreads more, this is the mini valley area that grows in Australia and I love it. I hope it's because it's gonna stay this short. And it's not short, but this aquarium is three feet tall. So it's gonna act like a carpet valley area because they only grow to this tall so that is what i'm hoping for because that's going to balance out all the algae on the glass and blah 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 and of course these ones when they take off even more this is already twice as big lost the flowers got uh, lost some leaves and got uh, new um, more light green leaves but it's when it went really well uh, and yeah, this is a new tank I set up. Uh, if you've been subscribed a long time, it was the first tank I bought. What is this tank? It's like, I don't remember, it's small, it's 40 liters. 
Google that in, I don't know, the gallons anymore. It was such a long time I made a video. I just saved two of the last female um, red tuxedo guppies. That hmm, just proved that they weren't such a good batch of red tuxedo guppies because that is also one. And that is not looking like in black tuxedo guppies. They went really good with the um, uh, figure eight puppers in the beginning, but after a while, I just lost the males because they have bigger tails and swim slower, I guess. I don't know. And the babies got eaten. And, and when I saw I only had three females left, I set this tank up just to save them. And we have a duckweed problem here. But this is Mini Reniki, Microsorum. I always forget this, and I always wanted to have this carpeted. We will see what happens. This is flaming moss, as you can see. That's why it's like flaming. So I like this tank. It's only a sponge filter. A homemade sponge filter. It's really an air stone, two sponges, and I just push them together in the corner here. And <laughs> my air pump for this is way too strong. It's on the lowest level. If I crank it up, you're gonna see. not gonna see because it's on the surface you see that but I didn't have anyone I didn't had I, I didn't want to go and buy a weaker one just to set this tank up I also have some red shrimp in here Bloody Mary's because I want to separate them and see if I can take the really strongest best looking ones in here this was just a spurting moment these lightings are actually for underneath in the kitchen or something, so I just put them on because I bought this light and it was advertised as 7.5 watt and when it arrived it was only 3 watts. So they promised me a new one and that's 3 months ago, they haven't got an in yet. So as soon as that comes in, I'm gonna have another one over here. It's not gonna look as ugly as this. Then I can take off the top as well and take out all this duckweed. And I think we're gonna be able to carpet this now. And it's also floating uh, Monte Carlo and other stuff on this and I wanna push down, so. But that was the honest tour. Um, like I said, I just wanted to show you an honest tour of your aquarium's not gonna look amazing all the time, but just make sure that the water quality is amazing and then you can take a break and the water changes you can watch movies when you do them you know and feeding doesn't take a lot of time right once a day is okay if you you have really healthy fish they're gonna take that for a long time i mean in the stores they usually feed them once a day or once every other day because they don't want to clean up too much so the fish survive a lot better if you have already have healthy fish but I wanted to show you how it looked when I haven't cared for the aquarium for three months. And I wanted to do an update. But I'm not going to do tags or anything, so it's not going to get any, a lot of views. I'm just doing this for the like 500 people that still ask me for a new video. Because my channel is pretty much dead. And it's my own fault for being away so many times and blah blah blah. But still. Um... Uh, this started out as a hobby and I never intended to live on it or something like that so uh, of course you hope for that but I mean I'm never gonna quit because I don't have to save it on my computer it's saved on YouTube so thank you so much for watching see you in the next video guys if you wonder about any fish what is that what is that and I also have many rare pleckles in the big tank just ask me in the comment section below or put suggestion of a video you want to know about or if you want to me show you how a my filters look inside or something like that. Comment section below. Bye bye.